Database functions have been around for donkey's years, so it's surprising that not many people know about them. There's a database function for nearly every aggregation type, from average, count and sum, right through to variance. And they're a great alternative to the ifs functions, like sum ifs, average ifs, min ifs, etc. Except they're more powerful. Let's take a look. Database functions require your data to be in a tabular format, which makes Excel tables ideal. Here's my example data, and you can see it's in a table named data table. It took me ages to think of that name. Now it's a list of invoices by type, date, invoice number, name, and amount. Now the nice thing about database functions is the syntax is the same for each variation. The first argument is a reference to the database, which sounds complicated, but really it's just the range of cells or table containing your data. The next argument is the name or number of the field that you want to aggregate. In these examples, I'm going to aggregate the amount column. And lastly, the criteria, which are stored in a table of their own, consisting of the column headers that you want to use, and then the criteria. In this example, my criteria are type level 1 and dates between January 1st and March 31st, 2021. Let's look at a formula example. I can use dsum to sum the amounts for level 1 between January and March. My database is the table, so I want to select not just the table body, but also the headers. And that puts hash all after the table name. Then I enter the name of the field in the table that I want to sum, in double quotes because this is text. And then lastly, I select my criteria and the headings for my criteria table. Now I don't need to select the name and amount columns. They don't have any criteria, so I'm just going to select the date columns and the type column. I'll press F4 to absolute that reference so that I can copy this formula across, close parentheses on dsum, and there's my result. Now I can copy this across because the syntax is the same, and then all I need to do is change the function being used. So this one is dcount, and then this one is dAverage, and then we have dmax and dmin. Now you notice there are some other database functions. If we type in d, you can see there's dcount a, so that's going to count both numbers and text. We've also got dget, which we'll look at later, dmax and min, which we've already looked at, d standard deviation and d standard deviation of a population dsum, which we looked at now, and dvar and dvarp, so they're variances and variants of a population. And again, the syntax is the same for all of them. Now in these examples, we're looking at AND criteria. That is where records are level 1, AND dates are greater than or equal to January 1, AND less than or equal to March 31st. We can already aggregate values using AND criteria with functions like sum ifs, count ifs, and average ifs, However, with the database functions, we can also handle OR criteria, and even a mix of AND with OR. Let's look at some examples. Let's say we want to sum the amounts for Level 1 from January to March, or Level 2 from January to March. All I need to do is type in another criteria for Level 2, and then I'll copy this criteria down for the dates. And then what I need to do is edit this range that's being referenced to include the next criteria row. Now it's important here that you don't include blank rows in your criteria argument because that's basically going to say to Excel, sum everything. So in this case I have two rows of criteria, so I've selected them in my reference for the criteria argument. And now you can see the D sum is returning 229,151. I won't waste time updating these, you get the idea. The next example I want to look at is multiple OR criteria for the same field. It's super easy. Let's say I want to sum level 1 or level 2, and I don't care about the dates. So I can simply delete the date criteria. It doesn't matter that dsum still references the date columns. The fact that they're empty will just tell Excel to sum all dates where the type is level 1 or level 2. 
Now, when specifying multiple OR criteria for different fields, it can be a little mind bending. So let's look at an example. Here, I want to sum type level one and I want to sum where the name is not equal to Atkins. I need to make sure my reference includes the name column. So here the DSUM function is aggregating all data, which is level one, including level one for all names, because the name fields blank on the first criteria row, plus all other levels that are not for Atkins, because in this case, the type field is blank on the row that contains the Atkins criteria. So you can see it can get a little bit confusing when you're using multiple OR criteria across different fields. Now database functions can also handle wildcards. So for example, let's say we want to sum where names begin with B. So I'll get rid of the type there. And in here, I'm going to type in B and the asterisk. So it's just going to sum where names begin with B. I need to remove the blank row from the criteria so that it doesn't incorrectly sum everything. And now we have the sum where the names begin with B. Now another way we can reference the field is with a number. So instead of typing in amount, I could simply enter the number of the column. In this case, amount is the fifth column in the table. So I type in a five. You can see I get the same result, but instead of typing in the word amount, I simply type in the number five. And notice it's not in double quotes, it's a number, it isn't text, so it doesn't need the double quotes. Unlike the other database functions which aggregate data, the dget function is the odd one out because it only returns a single value, a bit like VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. And that means if your result returns more than one matching record, you'll get the hash num error. Let's look at an example. So equals dget, we're going to reference the table here. The field we want to return is number five, column number five for the amount. And the criteria, well, let's just say we want it to find the amount for invoice number 603. So it returns 4,000, perfect. However, if we were to ask it to return, say type level one, We'll just change that reference to there. We get the num error. And that's because there are multiple results for level one. So it can't return a single value. It's going to give you the error. To wrap up, I just want to quickly cover the rules for database functions. So firstly, keep in mind that your criteria table only needs columns for the data that you want to filter on. So if your tabular data set has hundreds of columns, don't panic. You don't need every column replicated again in your criteria table. You can add multiple criteria by adding them to a new row on your criteria table. Be careful though only to reference the rows in the criteria table that aren't blank. If your database formula includes criteria rows that are blank, it's simply going to sum or average or count the whole table, essentially ignoring your criteria altogether. The criteria table can house formulas, for example, links to other cells, drop down lists and the like. So get creative with how you use them to incorporate interactivity into your reports. The criteria is not case sensitive, not for the column labels or the criteria itself. And lastly, remember the field argument of the formula can be the column name or the column number. I hope you're keen to give database functions a try. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.